Mike Nelson. My job, underwater research. In my field of work, the understanding of underwater detonation is quite essential. The Navy taught me how to handle and respect underwater explosives of different kinds. But I never knew that one day, long after I had left the Navy, underwater explosives would nearly cost me my life. I received a telegram asking me to charter an amphibian plane and fly up to the operating headquarters of the Hodges Engineering and Contracting Corporation in Canada. The wire didn't say what the assignment was. I would be told when I got there. If I didn't care to stay after that, I would return immediately with all expenses paid. When the amphibian landed, I was transferred to a launch and taken out to a barge moored in the channel. wire said that I was to see Mrs. Evelyn Hodges. It didn't say that she was a very exceptional woman. Exceptional in a lot of ways. And with a very exceptional assignment for me. But she came at it very indirectly. Mr. Nelson, I'm Evelyn Hodges. Good to see you. Mrs. Hodges, nice to see you. Oh, there's quite a barge you got here. In your letter, you weren't very detailed about uh, what I'm supposed to do. Well, I think this is the easiest way to tell you about this job, Mr. Nelson. We keep it around and remind ourselves while we're out here. Oh, yes, I remember this. That was terrible. This is just about where it happened, isn't it? We're moored directly over the rock that sank the ship. Up here we call it Killer Rock. In the past 90 years, over 75 ships have gone down here. At least a thousand people have drowned. Mr. Nelson, this is one of the worst shipping hazards in the world. Let me show you what it looks like. Our company has just been given the contract to blow the whole top right off that. How does your company plan to do that? Well, it's pretty involved. We start from that island. Right here. Drill a tunnel down here, across the bottom, up into the rock, and fill these tunnels with explosives. Oh, that's pretty ambitious. There's been talk about doing this now for some time, hasn't it? Yes. Other companies have been offered the contract and turned it down. Russ, my husband, is our chief engineer, and he's determined to lick it. But he needs help, Mr. Nelson. And that's where you would come in. I guess I'd better tell you about it as long as Mr. Hodges isn't here to do it himself. Well, where is Mr. Hodges? Somewhere below us right now. Alone. The diver he worked with quit. I suppose that should have been my first warning. The very fact that he would dive alone in tricky waters like these. No diver should go down without a partner. I sometimes do it when I don't want to involve others in danger. But just the same, it isn't right. And Hodges, no matter how dedicated he was to surveying killer rock underwater, to bringing back geological samples for analysis, had no business down there alone.
What finally brought him up was the need for a fresh supply of air. Hey, you must be Mike Nelson. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Mr. Hodges? I uh, trust you two came to terms and all that? Yes, Mrs. Hodges took care of everything. Very satisfactorily. She usually does. You know, she really runs this company. Well, what do you say? You ready to go to work? How long will it take you to get into your gear? Right now? Well, sure, why not right away? Well, as your new driving buddy, I'd like to make a few suggestions first. All right, go ahead. Now, wait, Bell, of yours. What about it? Wearing the outside of your harness, you know that. You got no safety release on it. What's going to happen when you're down there and you want to get rid of it all of a sudden? I'll tell you, Mike, I don't think I'll be in any kind of a situation that I can't handle. You better have a safety release on that. And wear it on the outside of your harness, huh? Okay. Now can we go to work? You usually throw your tank down like that? Well, why not? It's empty. That's why I came up, to get a fresh one. Oh, it's not the tank. It's the regulator that I'm concerned with. Why? What's wrong with it? Keep it up. Like that, huh? And it won't get damaged. And your hose won't get cut. You know he's right. That's good stuff, Mike. I'll tell you what. Why don't you take charge of all this gear, huh? I'll handle the survey. Incidentally, Evie, I'm down 60 feet with it already. If Mr. Nelson would just get into his gear, I'd like to start where I left off. Huh? I hope you don't mind my making suggestions. I'd like to feel free to whenever I think it's necessary. Oh, that's fine. As long as it doesn't involve a lot of diving fall to all, it's going to slow us up. Well, come on, Mike, let's get wet. You can change over the boat, huh? I'll be right with you, Mr. Hodges. Russ! Be right with you, Russ. Before we went down, I felt sure there'd be trouble. Underwater, I felt it even more surely. Russ wasn't content to swim at a normal pace. He charged along as if he had to break speed records. I swam at my own pace. Ahead of us, we could see the wrecks of ships that had died on Killer Rock, a frightening reminder of the importance and urgency of our job. with strong currents. I signaled him that we should connect ourselves with a safety line. He motioned me off. He didn't want to take the time. Our first crisis was coming fast. For deep below the surface, a tremendous discovery was waiting for us. Russ saw it first at least 90 feet down. The mouth of a cave, a cave that seemed to lead right into the rock. This could be the luckiest break in the world. If this cave went far enough and close enough to the top of the rock, there would be no need to dig dangerous tunnels. The explosives could be planted right in the cave. couldn't wait to investigate it. He couldn't tell much from the outside of the cave. Russ signaled that he was going in. It was foolhardy with the amount of air we had left, but I couldn't stop him. I 
I didn't know what was in that cave or what might happen in it. But whatever Mr. Hodges was getting himself into, I wasn't going to be far behind. Russ and I were in an underwater cave inside Killer Rock, which was responsible for the sinking of dozens of ships. If the cave was long enough to fill with dynamite, we could destroy Killer Rock forever. But more important to me at the moment were the time, the pressure, our supply of air, and the fact that my partner was once again racing ahead of me with no thought of the dangers that he might be running into. It didn't take Russ long to create his own danger. In his impatience, he caught his intake hose on a rock. He twisted toward it to free it. And then as he turned back, he inhaled water instead of air. The rock had torn his hose. He panicked. I quickly gave him air from my tank. He signaled that he was okay. Then I started to lead him out of the cave and up to the surface. There was no argument this time. Oh, honey, you, you sure had the right idea when you sent for Mike. He just saved my life. Thanks, Mike. <gasps> Your husband's a good diver, Mrs. Hodges. It's just that he's in too much of a hurry. He's moving too fast. We found a cave. It can be a shortcut for the entire project. All we have to do is fill it with explosive. If it's near enough to the top of the rock. Well, we'll find that out just as soon as I have a few seconds rest, huh? No. Oh. We're going to lay off until this afternoon. Then we'll go down and take a look. Okay. Okay, boss. We explored the cave together, this time my way. We took samples of the rock. made diagrams and drawings at every level and turn. We made a complete record of depths and made careful measurements of distances. Finally, we drew an accurate diagram showing all the passages of the cave. The structure of Killer Rock was everything that Russ had hoped for. There was just one hitch. What's the problem, Mike? Oh, this amount of rock above the uh, caves, it means that it would take at least uh, oh, 20 tons of neotropine Y3 to blow it. Well, we've got 20 tons. No, that's not the problem. It's getting it in there. See those narrow areas here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that uh, only one man at a time be able to get through those passages. And we can't get enough neotropine in there before winter stops us. That means more ships might go down. Unless we use something else. Liquid nitro? Yeah. Forget about liquid nitro. It's too unstable. Evelyn, you know as well as I do, a gallon of liquid nitro is equal to a whole ton of dynamite. But dynamite is safe to work with. 
Liquid nitro can go up any time with, with just one sharp jolt. And I know who you think is going to take that liquid nitro in. You. No, Russ. I, I won't hear of it. Oh, look. Just one man working alone can get enough liquid nitro into that cave to blast killer rock off the face of the earth once and for all. And in plenty of time. Oh, they don't get mad. Huh? I'll leave it to Mike. Am I right or wrong? He's right. It could be done. Just about uh, 20 dives. Yes. If he didn't blow himself to kingdom come first. Oh, Evie. Have you ever worked with liquid nitro, Mike? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. What your husband wants to do would be dangerous, but it's possible. You could put each bottle of nitro in a separate can, surround it with sponge rubber, made shock absorbent in every possible way. Only one man would be allowed to handle it. Always the same man. He's very, very careful. Could be done. I just won't allow it. What if Russ agreed to let me be that man? I would still say no. Absolutely not. You'll need a safety man, Mike. That'll be my job. Now, honey, that's how we're going to do it. Well, why can't you wait? Why? You know very well. This is why. It's worth trying, Mrs. Hodges. We'll play it safe. Trust me, huh? I packed each bottle of the explosive with every precaution. Even so. I knew that liquid nitro was so unstable it could be exploded even by a badly timed hiccup. I handled each one of those cans as though it was a day-old baby. No mother ever gave anything such loving care. They say a good diver should be able to hold his breath underwater for long periods. On this job, I didn't need anything else to make me hold my breath. It was all I could do to keep breathing. The passages into Killer Rock were long, but while I carried the nitro, they seemed endless. Russ acted as my safety man with a spare air tank. If I didn't return by a prearranged time, he'd come after me. He felt honor bound to share the risk, but almost as much as anything else, I was afraid that he'd try to help me when I didn't need help. and the long passages changed without warning. One updraft knocked my head against the roof of the cave. The can slipped from my hands. I must have been living right, for if ever I had a charmed life, that was the time. seemed hard to believe. I was carefully putting the last can in place. I still had to string the wire for the detonator. It led from the shore of a nearby island where the nitro safely could be set off from a blockhouse.
I had to do now was connect the wire to the terminals of the detonator can. Everything was going smoothly. Our job was almost over. It seemed impossible that anything could happen now. Suddenly I saw it. An electric eel nibbling on the detonator wire. The shock he could deliver could knock a man unconscious. And it wouldn't take nearly that much electricity to detonate the cave full of nitro. I watched the eel and held my breath, trying to think. If I moved toward him and frightened him, well, goodbye, Killer Rock. Goodbye, Mike Nelson. Goodbye, Russ Hodges. The thought of Russ made it worse. He was waiting outside the cave, and the time agreed upon was almost up. If he came tearing in from the other side, the eel would be just as likely to fire his charge. Yet there was no way that I could pass that eel without frightening it. Time was running out. The eel was still there, still in contact with that wire. And I knew that Russ was starting toward us now. couldn't wait any longer. My crowbar had an insulated handle. If my first blow could get the eel away from the wire, we had a chance. It worked. Killer Rock had lost its last chance to kill us. H hour for Killer Rock was at 0900 next morning. the killed in one of the most awesome explosions this side of the atom and the headline that served to remind a man of his duty was now at last truly a story of the past I'll be back next week at the same time with another sea hunt story Plan to be with us again, huh?